Do, do, do. And welcome back to the More Money Podcast. This is episode 393, and I'm your host, Jessica Morehouse. Welcome back to the show. I hope you are as into collecting rewards and getting that value while you're shopping as much as I am. I mean, I have that was one of the first, I feel like, kind of tips that I learned directly from my mom. If there is some sort of free program, you need to sign up for it. Otherwise, you were leaving money on the table. It's just a waste. And she would literally point out, like, this person, you know, didn't collect rewards at the the checkout. And that's that could have been, you know, future money. So it's just sign up to these programs. They're free. And so that is what we're going to be discussing in this episode. We're going to talk specifically and do a deep dive into the reward program, Air Miles. And to speak about that, I've got the president of Air Miles on the show, Sean Stewart, who has been an industry leader in the loyalty and customer experience space, which makes a lot of sense why he's the president of Air Miles, because he has a lot of background in this space. He was also the senior vice president of customer service at Canadian Tire, where he led the team responsible for enterprise loyalty, digital marketing, customer analytics, and personalization, and including the team that built and grew the Triangle Rewards Loyalty Program. Uh, He also worked at McKinsey & Co. and Accenture, where he developed customer acquisition and retention strategies, data-driven applications, and customer experience programs to accelerate business growth for clients. And from 2010 to 2013, Sean was a member of the Air Miles leadership team, where his role was accountable for data and analytics for partners. So it makes sense that he's back in the throw of things at Air Miles and really leading it into a very new era. Can we just, yeah, let's let's call it a new era for Air Miles. And we get into all of that new leadership, new ownership, and what they've changed and what they may change in the future. So lots of exciting stuff to look forward to. I do, of course, also want to acknowledge and say thank you to Air Miles for sponsoring this episode. And if you want to not just listen to it, but you also want to watch it, you can now because this is a video podcast. So, you know, check me out talking to Sean on my YouTube channel, jessicamorehouse.com slash YouTube is where you can find that. And if you also just go to the show notes for you know, any of the upcoming episodes or any episodes in season 18, such as this one is jessicamorehouse.com slash 393, you can find the video embedded in the show notes as well, including the transcript and all this other important stuff that you're going to want to check out. So without further ado, let's get to that interview with Sean. Welcome, Sean, to the More Money Podcast. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank Thank you. you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Lovely to be here. You're so welcome. Well, you know, to kick things off, what I usually do with my guests is I ask them a a little bit about themselves. So for people who don't know who you are, you're a pretty big deal. Do you want to kind of share (laughs) what you do? And and then also, you know, then we're going to dive into some really specific Air Miles talk, which I think people are very excited about. But yeah, tell us how you got to where you are today. Well, I have the fortune of leading this lovely little company called Air Miles. Uh, this is my <laughs> little startup. <laughs> little startup, my second tour of duty at Air Miles. Actually, I, I spent some time here uh, early 2010. Uh, for the past eight years, though, I've been uh, I was at Canadian Tire, so I was in the retail and spent most of my career actually in, in retail and marketing. So I get to have lots of fun with uh, consumer data and this thing we call loyalty programs. That has been such a dynamic space, so it's been uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And so let's kind of talk a little bit more about the background of Air Miles. How long has Air Miles, the company, been around? Because I feel like when I was a kid, it was a thing. So it's been around for decades. Well, I'm moving right now. And I I found under my bed my very first Air Miles card. So get out. uh, you wouldn't be the only one that's had it for uh, a long time because we've been around since 1992. So 30 plus plus years. Perhaps uh, one of the first coalition programs maybe invented the concept of coalition. Uh, But we've been around for, for ages. Uh, it's been quite a quite a journey. We were recently acquired by Bank of Montreal uh, last year, which was mm-hmm. uh, pretty big news for us, big news for our collectors and, and investors and our partners to have this uh, this lovely organization, Bank of Montreal, who's been a wonderful partner since inception, uh, standing behind us. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, just to kind of uh, talk a little bit more about that, because that is a really big change. What does that mean for Air Miles now that BMO is uh, acquired Air Miles? 
It means investment, frankly. It means value back into the market to collectors. Uh, for a long time, I would think Air Miles lost a step. It was once the uh, only game in town and the competition yeah. heated up and really the value just wasn't there anymore. And so BMO really believes in this program. Uh, it's an integral part of their business. Uh, and the investment, which we've already seen, frankly, it's, uh, it's much easier uh, leading an organization where you've got the support and resources behind you. So we're really in a new world uh, with, with BMO's ownership. So to me, that sounds like, you know, there's a lot more competition, which I mean, competition is always a good thing. That means, you know, companies, brands have to up their game. And now that BMO is involved, we're just at the beginning of seeing what that kind of means, especially for collectors. That's right. I mean, our first, uh, I like to say internally, our first focus was putting miles back into the collector's genes. Uh, it really is about the table stakes in terms of value, in terms of excitement and opportunity to earn we have 300 plus brands in the program, some of which many Canadians probably don't know about. So our marketing efforts in, in behind that, and that's going to lead for us, uh, and you'll see later this year, a really big unveiling of what we think is a really transformative program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I, when I saw the news, I'm like, I think this means that, yeah, we're going to see a lot more value in terms of this program to stay competitive in the market and to be able to take certain opportunities that maybe weren't you couldn't afford before. 100% uh, value and simplicity, right? So, yeah. and creating awareness around it. Um, you know, it's, as I said, there's 300 plus brands in the program. Those are large national brands, but we have small businesses in this program. I think we actually have quite a competitive advantage in small business. My favorite example is there are dentists that issue air, yeah. air miles. And that's a place uh, many programs don't play. So we really feel like we're in the fabric of Canadian business and giving collectors more opportunity to, to earn value. Yeah, no, I think that, and that really does set air miles apart because I mean, just because you mentioned that the place that I go to get my eyebrows done, they <laughs> allow me to collect air miles. I'm like, that is so random. And I think it's a chain. I think there's a few you know, um, shops in Toronto, but I'm like, that is so weird. I always kind of figured if you're a points program, you have to, you know, it's very expensive to be involved and they're only going to look at those big brands to be part of it. But I think there's something to be said, especially if we're also trying to promote, you know, shop local or, you know, go to these smaller businesses. I think that's really great. And hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more of that. That's really yeah, exciting. I love, I love that you pointed out local, uh, because it really is at the heart of it. Um, you know, a lot of these businesses don't have the scale and the resources, the same as a national brand, to really go after their their, their customers or to develop these programs. And so for us, uh, going local is incredibly important, making it easy for these organizations. It's really a purposeful strategy, which we call being open and flexible. Any business should be able to access this program, and therefore any collector should be able to earn whenever they shop. That That's the idea. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned that there are so many brands that are part of it, most, uh, you know, people probably have no idea. Can you kind of share a little bit more about if someone wanted to find out more about, you know, where, who, who is collecting? Because sometimes you only know, oh, they have that on their website that they, yeah. you know, allow me to collect air miles. Um, and, and what are some of those brands that may be of interest to people that they may not be aware of? So we have a nifty little tool on our, our website, airmiles.ca, where you can actually put in your postcode and it'll show like the pins all over the map and Ooh, show you all the different places. That. <laughs> That's yeah. helpful. <laughs> yeah, I love it because uh, I, sometimes I go in there and I have to remind myself of all the great partners we have and it just explodes in these red pins. It's really, it's really cool. Uh, I think most people would recognize uh, when you think about gas and grocery, Shell, M Metro uh, yep. being in the program. Obviously, if you have uh, the BMO credit card, you can more earn more in the program. But through our various other programs, uh, Air Miles Shops, which allows you to earn online, or a card link program, which allows you to link your MasterCard and earn, we have lots of other partners. Like Most people are surprised when I tell them that you could earn Air Miles if you shop at Lululemon or you shop at right. Sephora. Uh, yeah. and so that's on us to create better awareness, right? Like it really, yeah. Yeah. and, and really bringing the most relevant partners, uh, to, to our marketing. Uh, but if you go on those properties, you can see the, the full list, but I really recommend just doing the map and I'll tell you everything. Yeah. Now you mentioned that obviously I think the old school way is having the physical card. I still use the physical card. Well, actually not, not much anymore. I usually now have it on my Apple wallet. Um, but you mentioned there's a couple of different ways to collect. Obviously you can still do the card or you could put it in your Apple wallet or you said online. What does that mean? Like online? Is it like a browser? Like you, you have to go into a website and yeah. like, what's that mean? Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll run through and, and this, 
it's a good time to mention, you know, loyalty programs have become complex. And so we're, yeah. we're putting, we're putting uh, customers through a little bit of effort here. But uh, if you go to Air Miles Shops, that allows you to enter your Air Miles number. And when you shop at our affiliate partners, i.e. Lululemon, uh, you'll earn Air Miles that way. So you go in, you put in your number, and then you go to the website and you shop as you would. Right, so that so you do you go to the Air Miles shop. You don't go to like Lululemon's website. You no. go to Air Miles shop and then you find Lululemon in the website, right. click on that, and then it directs you to Lululemon. And that's how you earn the points. You got Very it. important. Otherwise, Fair. you'll miss out on points. That's Exactly. You'll miss out on lots of points. Yeah. Um, the second way that uh, we have is, is Air Miles card link. And what this allows you to do is link any MasterCard. It doesn't have to be an Air Miles MasterCard. It can be any MasterCard with your Air Miles account number. And there you can actually shop in store online depending on the partner. And so when it mm. sees that you've used that MasterCard, so I'll take Dollarama, for example. Yeah. When you go shop at Dollarama, you pull out the MasterCard you linked, you'll automatically get rewarded. You don't actually have to pull out your Airmos card even. So it's a, it's a lot simpler and easy for, easier for the partner, right? Because they don't have to take the Airmos plastic card, right? Yeah. Just whatever form of payment you use is uh, as simple as that. Uh, we have a feature in our app. And by the way, our app is where you got to be. That's a place to be if you want to learn about everything and get the most value out of the program. Uh, we really recently launched a capability called Air Miles Receipts. Yes. Uh, and this is new for us. And the thinking was um, back to this open and flexible framework is we want people to earn wherever they shop grocery. Uh, it's no surprise that Sobeys uh, exited our program last year. And for us strategically, it was important to be relevant in the grocery category because that's where Canadians get so much value. Yeah. And so this program allows you to take a picture of your receipt wherever you shop grocery and earn miles. And so mm -hmm. when you go into the app, it'll say you get you get some miles on broccoli, you get some miles on dairy products, you get some miles on this, this and this. And we partner with uh, consumer packaged goods companies to put some offers in there. You go buy those yes. things, you take a picture of your receipt and ta-da, you get the miles. So again, a mm -hmm. little bit of effort. You gotta, you know, you gotta take yeah. a picture. It's 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 a really great experience, and we make it fun and engaging. Uh, but that's just a new way for us to to issue air miles. And then of course, there's using your BMO Air Miles credit card, which is a, a massive part of the value proposition, where you'll earn miles on everything you purchase. Um, and then the old school way still exists. You know, you can yeah. you can yeah. you can go to Shell and pull out your plastic card and. And uh, we have a ton of partners that accept uh, in that form, too. So we have introduced some complexity, but we've actually by, by doing that, we've actually made it easier for new partners to come on. Right. Because otherwise, if they want to accept a plastic card, they're having to do six, 12 months of technology work to figure out how to yeah. accept the card. So a lot of the a lot of loyalty programs are going to this card link mechanism because it's just easier to do. Yeah. Yeah. Most people just don't, I think, use plastic. Like even for me when I'm, <laughs> depending on where I am, if I'm around a lot of young people and I pull out like my credit card, you realize I'm the only one who's has a wallet. <laughs> Everyone's just using their phone these days. You know? <laughs> so it's, it makes sense that you have to have, there's lots of different ways that you can get involved. And yeah, most of us, you know, forget our cards at home. And so having it on your phone, using the app, doing it online, that makes a lot of sense. Now, Speaking specifically um, about miles, I know there's kind of two iterations, like there's dream miles, cash miles. I always get confused about what exactly those mean. <laughs> what are they and how do they work? Yeah, well, um, it is by far the number one um, complaint by collectors. Why do you have these two uh, different yeah. miles? You're making art. Okay, so yeah. we're working, that we're actually tr um, testing the ability to transfer miles. So you're not always oh, locked that's, That'd in, be so great because I have, I feel like I have some miles stuck in three miles <laughs> and I don't know what to, what to do. <laughs> Yeah, so so we're actually doing a test, uh, looking to roll that in some form uh, later this this year. Uh, you know, there are different types of collectors, and I found this even when I was uh, leading the Triangle program at Canadian Tire. There are the people who aspire and love to save, right? They want that want that big thing. They want that free trip. They want you know a free uh, coffee make or something like that. And then there's that those that just want like a discount every time they shop, right? Mm -hmm. And so really, when you set this, cash is for the people who want that just quick discount and dream as it's described are those people yeah. who are aspirational and want something bigger. And so that's, that's generally it. There's lots of flexibility in terms of setting which ones you want to collect. As I say, we're trying to simplify that. Uh, we think it's a little too complicated uh, in today's form. Um, but it, it is interesting when you look at the data and you actually talk to collectors, people do sit in pretty, pretty distinct camps when it comes to how they collect. 
Yeah, I think I said it originally to Dream Alice, but then I realized I am more of that cash miles kind of person. I like that instant discount. I, I'm curious if since you have so much like data probably at your fingertips, um, what do most Canadians prefer? Is it like the instant discount or is it the saving? It's it's pretty much split down the middle in terms oh. of what people say, where we lean towards the dream side. Uh, but I think, as you can imagine, given uh, the economic uh, headwinds that yeah. are up against us, uh, consumers are seeking short-term value. Um, so we have seen a little more on the grocery gas side in the past year. In fact, we uh, we had about 750 million miles redeemed in gas grocery in 2023. So wow. about $75 million of value that Canadians got uh, from, from air miles just for gas and grocery. So we definitely see those trends um, shifting. It was post-COVID travel started to come back. So again, when you've got nearly 10 million, 10 million people in a program, you do see all sorts of segments. There are definitely people who are still using their miles to go on international vacations and big trips. Absolutely. But in general, the average person has started to lock down on on getting some value right out of the program. That's interesting. So yeah, yeah, can you like see the trends of like, oh, people are redeeming more because of what's going on in the economy compared to like, oh, they're saving more. Like and, and what has been happening the past couple of years or even like the past last year which yeah. is a bit of a weird yeah. year. Yeah. Well, redemption's gone up for us um, in two ways. One to to your point, the to trying to get as much value. People um, are looking at whatever account I have that I can extract value out of, I'm going to do so. And because of the acquisition by BMO, we were in the headlines, so people remembered, "Oh, I'm going to go check yeah. my Air Miles account, see if I got anything yeah. in there." So we saw a fair bit uh, of that behavior. And that's gas grocery, that's uh, gift cards, e-vouchers, you know, things that really can be used like cash in the short term. Definitely seen that that behavior increase. And we love that. I mean, we're, we exist for consumers to get free stuff, like ultimately. Yeah. And and so uh, we saw a nice, uh, nice bounce back in our redemption over the past year. But I will say, like, our travel business is pretty strong, too. A yeah. uh, fair amount of international still happening. So... There are, as you can imagine, with uh, 10 million people in the program, there are diehards in this program who have lots of miles to redeem <laughs> and have been saving yeah. up for many years to you know, get that dream vacation. So I always wondered, too, with because I historically have been a hoarder of like cash and points. And lately I've been realizing, why am I doing that? Like spend it, you know, like you only live once. And also, too, especially if we have seen. Um, just the cost of everything, inflation and interest rates um, being so high, I realized, actually, I'm probably going to get more value if I spend this money because I don't know how expensive this thing will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, like, is 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 there a better strategy or just in your opinion, I guess it, it depends on the person, but does it make more sense that there's a term and like there's a credit card churning community on Reddit that sometimes I, I like to visit and see what they're chatting about. But it's all about like the earning of points and burning of points. Earn and burn is what they say. And yeah. they say that's kind of the best way instead of hoarding. Because, again, you'll the points, you know, you're not going to earn interest on those points and things become more expensive. Yeah, I think the key is uh, back, back to my earlier point. If you're really if you want to put a little effort in, uh, you can get a deal. Right. And what I mean by yeah. that is, is a lot of programs, including our own, have gone to very targeted offers. Right. It's not everything that is, is mass. And so mileage may vary by collector, but you have to look out yeah. for these things. Right. Because in yeah. some cases, the offer could be just for you. And that's not just on the earn side. That's on the redeem side. Right. I can tell you, we run, we, we, we run promotions all the time on the redeem side. So. You're right. There's general price inflation, but if you look out for it and you check, you know that thing that you might have been having your eye on might have a you know redeem for it and actually get miles back, right? Because we want people to get back into the cycle of yeah. not having a zero balance. We never want a collector to have a zero balance. Yeah. And so it's it's not unlike when you're trying to shop for a deal at your favorite retailer. You know, you check the deals, you wait, we wait for promotion. Um, and so on and so forth. So it's very similar to how you might might retail shop. And some people are more willing to invest that effort. And some people just want simple and just give me my miles and let me use my miles. And we, mm -hmm. we serve well, both. Speaking of promotions, where can what is what are some ways that people can find some of these deals? Are there newsletters? Are there you know, forums, like where can we find, because that's the one thing, especially when it comes to travel, sometimes you see online, you're like, hey, there's a really good flight. You're like, shoot, I wish I knew about that sooner. Yeah. 
Well, as I said, the, the, the app is the home, right? Okay. And, and you got to be open to getting notifications. You got to be open yeah. to getting emails, right? Um, but you actually point out there's lots of great forums out there whether it's Reddit, my favorite's red flag deals. I love, yeah. I love reading uh, customer feedback and those, we learn a lot from that uh, open, honest feedback, let's say. Yeah. And so, yeah, you have to be open to, to having the communication, but it's, it's all there, right? Yeah. You, you, every Friday we push out new, de- new deals, you go on your app, it's all, it's all there. Um, and so some, some of it is you put the effort, some of it is word of mouth and some of it is just doing your own research uh, in other forums. If you go on our website, we have a blog, that uh, the outlines, I would say part education, right? Like, yeah. Because sometimes it's hard to know what you're getting. Like, what is a mile? Right? Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> ask. That was my next question. Is like sometimes the math on these point programs are like, wait, is a thousand points a dollar? Like, I, you know, because why is it like that? So yeah, can you explain? I know it's. I guess it depends on what you're redeeming it for, or or how does it work? What is the value of a, a mile? Yeah, but there's that's exactly right. It depends on what you're redeeming for. A value, like if you're if you're redeeming a mile for a gift card, it's gonna it's probably not gonna get as much value as if you were redeeming it for a trip or something, right? Because Right. So travel probably gets you the most value when we're thinking dollars and miles. Yeah. 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 That, that would be yeah. a good way to think about it. Um, we are trying our best through communication to not just show what something's worth before you go to, to take advantage of the offer, but like replaying back to you, like why you earned something and when you earned it, right? Because sometimes, I don't know about you, I get in my app and listen, I, I, I lead air miles and I open the app and I see all these miles pop. I'm like, how did I get those? I yeah. have no idea how I got those. <laughs> so I like, go through the transaction. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And so like, just tell people, like, just keep them educated on, hey, did you know you got this value? And Because it, it, is, it accumulates fast. Uh, mm-hmm. But I know not the average Canadian doesn't wake up every day thinking about us. And so no. we got we got <laughs> a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <sorry. laughs> that would be a bit obsessive. Well, the one thing and I, I, I talk about this all the time, um, you know, I've always and this was something I feel like I learned very young um, from my mom. She always had air miles. She always put any kind of points program she was involved in because she's like, this is free money. And she would always be like when, you know, you go to the grocery store or check out anywhere. She's like this person and, you know, and they're like, oh, do you have this card? And they're like, oh, sorry, don't. They just missed out on something. And so so that's for me is just like it's a no brainer. It's a free program. It doesn't cost you anything besides, I guess, a little time and attention. Um, but what would you say to people thinking that, I don't know, like, is this really worth my effort? Is it really worth it to participate? Yeah. Well, I would say, and this is probably different from, from loyalty programs when they first originated, where it was, you know, you didn't have to do much to earn. You just swipe your card and you got stuff. I I, I do think you need to be planful about it. Say, what are my goals? Uh, Where do I shop? Does this program offer miles at the places I shop? Yes or no. Um, Am I willing to change where I shop to get miles or not? Right. We know that you don't shop a retailer just for loyalty program. There's lots of reasons why you do or don't shop retail. And so do we map on top of how you spend your money? Yes or no. Um, and if we do, you're, you stand to gain a lot of value uh, with a little effort. Right. We all the programs are asking for a little bit more effort, uh, making it simple through digital. Right. As you said yeah. earlier, it just simplifies the experience a little bit as a trade off um, and then watch it accumulate. Right. And get free stuff. I mean, it's at the end of the day, these programs aren't that complex. It's choosing the right one that fits your profile. Yeah. I mean, for me, my main grocery store is Metro. So it makes a lot of sense for me to use Air Miles because that is the program that they have. And so it's kind of a no brainer. But I'm also wondering, because, you know, for me, like having points and even credit cards that get you those certain points, that just makes sense to me in terms of like thinking about your whole financial plan and toolkit, things that you can optimize, basically. I'm always about like, how can we make things simple, but also optimize it so you can get a little bit more? Um, now, yeah, for that, I guess, yeah, what, what would you say to people being like, how do I integrate this? Yeah, what should I, is it really just about taking a good look at where am I shopping and why? And what credit cards and, and programs am I using? And am I actually getting, you know, m- the most bang for my buck? Yeah, well, I think that's where, if you, if you want to really take the step change, and this is where you get into the conversation around tiers in a program, yeah. where you get into the conversation around, do I get the credit card associated with that program? 
because it's it's step change and multiple in terms of the benefit you stand to gain, right? We we have we have tiers in our program. We have a gold and an onyx tier, uh, and that gets you extra benefits. It gets you deals on redemption and merchandise and travel. Uh, likewise, with the the BMO credit card, you're gonna you're gonna earn more. You're gonna get accelerated earn, and you're gonna get other benefits. And so you just have to stack that up against what you do and where you shop and other uh, other programs. Uh, Air Miles in particular, we feel we need to be more competitive. And so we're looking at redesigning and offering more back to, to collectors. Uh, and that's just table stakes at this point. That's just yeah. table stakes. We really feel it's the flexibility to earn wherever you shop and not have to just lock yourself down into one particular yeah. retail all the time. And the, the options you get on the redemption side, like you can pretty much redeem for it. We have uh, actually, we have an interesting benefit with our Onyx program where you can call our call center and redeem for anything. Oh. They'll, they'll actually facilitate the transaction for you. So we've had over the last couple of years, people redeem for vehicles. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, they've so got, wait, you're telling me I can buy a car with air miles? You absolutely can. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. If you're, if you're, <laughs> that's interesting. I don't think I have enough air miles for that. Say, but yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> if you've got enough air miles for a car, there's no doubt you're an Onyx member and you're gonna get that. Yeah. get that privilege. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this is just a great reminder. I tell everybody, especially at the beginning of the year, though. I know we're we're entering kind of the second quarter soon. Um, that so much of what we do with our money is on autopilot and we forget why we set it up that way, whether that's our investments or the credit cards we use. I talk to so many people and I'm like, why are you still, why are you using that credit card? Like, what do you get out of it? They're like, I don't know. I've just had it for 10 years. And I'm like, that's not a bad thing, but have you thought about opening a different credit card that can get you, you know, better cash back, better rewards, whatever. And it's because just life gets busy. We never think about doing that. And it does take mental work. You're tired, you're busy. Like, Believe me, opening up a new credit card, it should be simple, but sometimes it feels like a lot of work. <laughs> but I feel like, and, and on the other side of it too, besides like doing a little audit, as I call it, I, I call everything an audit. Like I'll be like, we need to audit our fridge. And Josh is like my husband. He's like, you need to stop using that term. I hate it. <laughs> a little review of what's going on. But another thing too is we accumulate our, you know, air miles, whatever points in these programs, sometimes uh, on autopilot automatically, and we forget how much we accumulate. I think that should be another part of your kind of check in with yourself, whether at, at the beginning of the year or every quarter, or every, you know, six months, how much points do I have? And what are they for? Because right. you don't want to necessarily just leave them there. And, you know, I, I okay, that, I have another question that popped to my mind, but I'll, I'll say that after. But, mm. you know, that is one of those things. So you eventually need to use them. Like even if you were a hoarder like I have been in the past, at some point you do need to use them otherwise it's it is not valuable. <laughs> right. Well, and and conversely from, you know, the program perspective, we want you to see value out of the program. And so Yeah, exactly. So I think I, I like the discipline or around I'll say the audit, but I like I like the discipline yeah. around checking in with yourself. But yeah. likewise for us, um, reminding people you know, hey, like mm -hmm. you've got, did you know you have enough now to get that thing you were saving up for? Exactly. And so. And why are you waiting? <laughs> well, we'll get yeah, it. that's that's right. Because we, we see when people get the thing they want or they get something for perceived like, for free, uh, they get reengaged in the program. And so we're constantly and I'd say this is maybe different than Air Miles of Past. I think Air Miles of Past wasn't as actively getting people to redeem. Whereas today, it, I mean, I've, I've lived in many loyalty programs where that's the moment. That's the crucial moment where you get that, oh, wow, this is cool, right? I got something that I needed yeah. for free. And then so. you want to continue participating, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the question that popped into my head, just thinking about there is a monetary value to these rewards, but only if you use them. I remember having conversations with people and seeing uh, conversations like this online what happens to your points if you die unexpectedly? Like that is like kind of money in a checking account that no one can open. Is there something that you can do to set it up to give it to some of your dependents? Yeah, we, in fact, our, our call center deals with uh, a number of unfortunate circumstances like that. Um, and, and yeah, we, we, there's often transfers uh, that are done as part, part of wills um, to, to, to family accounts. So it is, it's an asset, right? It's, it's like, uh, exactly. it's an asset, um, in, 
separations. It's an asset. And when someone passes away, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an asset and it's, it's value and it's split according to, you know, any kind of investment vehicle or cash you have. Um, so, so yeah, we, we, we do help. Uh, there's not like a, an easy function on our website where you can go trans, yeah. transfer miles. Um, we, that's fraught with fraud in some cases. And yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You got to be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, I got to be a little careful, but yeah, no, our, our call center can take care of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, just a, a th you know thing to, to remind you, I've just been having lots of conversations about estate planning lately is me and my husband's parents are getting older. It's like having those conversations with your parents to be like, do you have, because again, it's an asset. That's right. Do you have points? Where is the information I can find? Because then, you know, no one's getting anything <laughs> and they could have been hoarding them for decades and never use them because they're waiting to get something big. So making a little note about that, finding out. If uh, that's the case and where the information is, so you can make that call if something happens. That's, like, yeah. I'm going to write that note for myself. <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, absolutely. So there's obviously so many different programs. You mentioned when Air Miles came on the scene in the 90s. Oh, my gosh, the 90s. That feel like don't doesn't the 90s feel like, oh, that was only 20 years ago. And then you're like, no, it was longer. I, I feel that way about three years ago. I hate that. I hate <laughs> it. Like, oh, yeah, 20 years ago. No, it was long. Um, but, you know, it was one of the the, the first ones. Now there's a there's kind of too many almost uh, competing for your attention and your dollars. Why should people consider miles when there's so many others on the market? Well, it's, it's back to being open and flexible. Like we have 300 plus brands. So there, it's very likely whether it's a big brand like Sephora or it's your dentist, like we talked about earlier, there are ways for you to earn miles. And I suspect uh, we're going to have more places for you to earn than any other program. Right. And oh, so exciting. making it easy to join, it's very easy to join, download our app, see what offers there are and uh, map that against where you shop. Yeah. When could people maybe expect to see or hear about some of these new innovations or new partners in the program? Yeah. So we're always adding new partners. And so, you know, through our email communication, whenever we add a partner to the platform, uh, we'll communicate it there. Uh, our recent launch of uh, Air Miles Receipts. We, we talked about earlier, our new travel platform, uh, which actually allows you to earn more when you book travel. It allows you to actually pay with points and cash. Ooh, yeah, that's good. So so like if you just don't have the right amount of miles to get there, you can kind of cover off with, with you know credit card purchase. So we're seeing more bookings come, come that way. And I will say in the next few months, you're going to continue to see, I mean, we're on this path of churning out new stuff like every month. Like this, this in the two years I've been here, it's about go, go, go and putting new value, new features out. And so uh, stay tuned. I, in the next few months, you're going to see some great things. Well, Sean, it was such a pleasure having you on the show. And I feel like I learned a lot. There's definitely a few things that I want to do differently <laughs> um, with my air miles, connect some things to the app. And, and honestly, I don't know if I've done that postal code thing. That sounds radical that I've never tried that. So I'm going to try that right after uh, this call. So uh, where can people find more information? You mentioned a few things, but just to remind them and, you know, where can they get the app, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, air, airmiles.ca and uh, the app store on your favorite device. Uh, we'll be there. We'll be there. Amazing. Great. Well, thank you so much, Sean, yeah, thank for you. taking the time to be on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jessica. And that was episode 393 of the More Money Podcast with Sean Stewart, president of Air Miles. Make sure to you know check out Air Miles, learn a little bit more about what is going on there. And if you don't already have an account or are collecting Air Miles, why not? Start doing it right now. It is a completely free program. There's nothing. It does not cost you anything. There's only things that you're going to get if you participate. So you can find more information at airmiles.ca. Also highly recommend that you download the app because, I mean, most of us are on our mobile devices. And, you know, for me, for example, one thing that I found very effective instead of having the cards in your wallet or forgetting your wallet is having it in your Apple wallet or whatever kind of digital wallet that you have on your smartphone just makes it easier to you know be like oh shoot i forgot my wallet oh wait i have my phone just some tips just some tips and if you want to find out a little bit more about what we talked about in this episode and also watch it if you haven't you know if maybe you want to check it out again watch it again listen to it again just go to the show notes jessicamorehouse.com slash 393 that is where you can find it and since i mentioned the show notes if you're ever looking for the show notes for any episode in the past in the future you can easily find it by going to either jessicamorehouse.com slash 
podcast or jessicamorehouse.com slash whatever the number of that episode is. Very easy to find on my website. Now, a few uh, things I just want to remind you of or share. So number one, I'm doing a big book giveaway as I always do. And so if you want to check that out, check some of the uh, books that I'm currently giving away and I will be adding more throughout this podcast season. Just go to jessicamorehouse.com slash contest and you can easily enter to win any of those books, all of those books, whatever you want to do, jessicamorehouse.com slash contest. Also too, speaking of my website, a couple things if you are new to the podcast, or just need a little reminder of what's going on. I do have a bunch of budget spreadsheets. If you're looking for a way to organize your money, check out my downloadable budget spreadsheets on my website, jessicamorehouse.com slash shop. And if you want to learn more about investing for Canadians, specifically passive investing, uh, check out my Wealth Building Blueprint for Canadians course. It is over three years old now. Hey, happy birthday investing course. Um, and you can find more information about it at jessicamorehouse.com slash course. Look at some student testimonials. Check out the you know breakdown of what's in the course. And if you're interested to learn even more, all you have to do is apply. And then you got to have a phone call, a one-on-one with me. It is a special kind of onboarding process that I do for my course to make sure, A, this is a good fit for you, and B, you get any of your questions asked and you are heard. You can talk to me one-on-one. This is something that I probably won't always offer. And so if you want to learn more about how to get started with investing and you want to speak to me about it one-on-one, you should do it right now, jessicamorehouse.com slash course. Well, that is really it for me. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you want a little teaser, who is going to be on the show next week? I have another Jessica on the show. I love having other Jessicas on the show. It doesn't happen often, but it also kind of weirds me out because that's my name. <laughs> It's my name. <laughs> um, but I have Jessica Spangler on the show. She's the author of Invest Like a Girl. And we're going to obviously talk about investing with, you know, within the lens of being a woman and all the things and, and her rise from being, she has a PhD, I believe, in pharmacy. And now she's like writing this book on investing. I need to know that journey. <laughs> I need to know what happened. So that is going to be what is on the show next week. So thank you so much again for listening and supporting this podcast. Podcast. And of course, a big thank you always to my podcast team, video edit by Justice Carrar and produced by MRAVCanada.com. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you back here next Wednesday for a fresh new episode of the More Money Podcast.